in order to fly to the moon, we need good technology. And um, if you develop technology step by step, only one company, it'll take a lot of time. Currently, exploration on the moon is restricted by the need to take everything with us. And so if we can find and extract and use resources on the moon that allows us to travel further into space, it allows us to support human life for longer periods on the moon. And that's why the use of space resources is so critical. For this challenge, we create a lunar analog environment. So we use mainly basalt for the main terrain, but there are certain areas that we try to simulate and resource enriched areas. And then we recreate some features that we can see in the lunar surface, like some craters, and also we place some boulders like to, to, to mimic some of the features that astronauts and rovers can find on the lunar environment. We opened the call to all of ESA's member states, which allowed participants from all over Europe, including Canada, to showcase their technology. In the first round, we asked them to navigate around obstacles, to take uh, isolated measurements of, of boulders. In the second round is, is a much broader perspective we want to address. And we selected the five which actually competed here in Luxembourg for the final phase of the Space Resources Challenge. ESRIC was formed just less than two years ago and it's a unique partnership between LSA, ESA and LIST. One of our core activities is to support the space resources community and the ESA ESRIC Challenge represents one of our activities that brings together the community. The unique factor is really that instead of just asking for paperwork, we ask for a demonstration. They had to overcome challenges in a short amount of time. They only had five hours to showcase how they would map this large area, and it had to be flawless. Okay. Yeah. The first phase uh, was important for us because during that time we were able to develop kind of the system, let's say, that operates. It was okay. So during this phase we just wanted to be faster, better and um, more proper organized. We took an approach with, um, first of all, with several rovers covering more uh, surface uh, in certain time. If you have more rovers, you have more chances, more chances in a certain time to, to, to by distributing the, the platform to, to collect uh, interesting information, uh, scientific uh, information of value. We have uh, several robots that are very heterogeneous, which allows us to be able to um, deal with any unexpected occurrences that might happen. So if we have, for example, a terrain where one of our robots can't really cross it easily, we are able to just use one of our other robots to cross this area. We are all very passionate about exploration and interdisciplinary communication and interdisciplinary exploration. So we're a team of scientists and engineers um, and we work really hard to create software that allows um, for efficient operations, rapid decision making and um, maximizing science return. We are a very diverse team with different backgrounds, all from Swiss institutions and also with industrial partners. Um, but I think it's really also that, that diversity. We have roboticists, we have planetary scientists, we have geologists. And I think that's really a strength of our team and what makes working together also so much fun. The 
is a hard challenge. There's a lot of uncertainty. We have very little control and very little prior knowledge about what's actually going to happen during the final mission and the actual evaluation, which is very scary. Uh, but it's also really interesting and cool because it comes with a lot of different challenges to robustness and flexibility that we usually only have in the more focused industry projects we do. It was exciting to test out our different operational and exploration strategies and uh, yeah, it, it was fun. It was intense. We're overachievers. We wanted all the bonus points. A lot of us spent a lot of time in isolation or doing mission operations so we know what it's like to work with teams under extreme pressure. We care a lot about making sure that we select the right people. We've collected many ideas in these two tests. We, innovative ideas, ideas we can use in future ESA missions to the moon. And that proves that the ideas can come from companies and research institutes. We need good engineers, we need good teams, good scientists, and like running such a competition is a huge inspiration for the teams. And I'm really, really happy to see the teams here being fully passionate, being prepared, spending a lot of effort and energy. It's a great, great opportunity for us to at first understand other technologies, other approaches. So we need to develop special features related to this, uh, to this challenge. It provides us the idea um, how to prepare better uh, software, uh, more robust. Challenge-driven innovation works, and I'm particularly happy to see that certainly for prospecting the Moon future mission. That is the right way forward. Uh, we need strong Europe on the surface of the Moon.